Good, how are you doing? Good. What are you filming? I'm, we're doing a documentary on homelessness here in Victoria. I'm part of the Committee to End Homelessness. Part of the who, sorry? Committee to End Homelessness, and oh, we're yeah? filming a documentary on the state of homelessness. Oh, yeah. How long have you been doing that for? Oh, I for... You don't have my face on it. Well, you, you already got on there, but yeah. uh, we've been doing it since June or July. Okay. And what's the focus of your documentary? Homelessness. Yeah, and we were asked to, uh, you know, sort of Talking film people who were interacting with the homeless, so here we are doing that right now. Yeah, okay. We're showing the police interacting with people. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's been a lot of people you, coming. You did that to me when I saw if I'm talking to the police, and you did that to me. Yeah. I come up to you, grab your fuck camera, and smash it. Well, we wouldn't film you. That's We wouldn't film you. That's the rat. Yeah, we won't film you, no problem. Cat, and uh, we're at the Art Place Society. The Meridium over here was jam-packed full over the last couple of days. The cops have come and cleaned it up. You can't sit anywhere, otherwise you're thought of as loitering. It's mandatory now, no panners. You have to be three feet at least away from the building. You can't go anywhere now in this town. You've got cops on bikes, you've got cops in suburbans, you've got cops in vans, you've got cops walking, you've got undercover cops, and it's a little bit much. Feel like you have no privacy whatsoever. Uh, I see that the um, the situation with uh, street people, call it rather than simply homeless, because I have no idea who has a home and who doesn't, um, uh, is something that is definitely hurting the city and hurting our reputation. It's making it harder to live here and hurting our reputation across the country and, and further. So much of what we hear in the newspaper about public disorder and um, crime on the street and people's fears about homeless people, it centers on a lack of private space and space that's livable you know, to offer people just one room to live in um, that really isn't compatible for living. The Good Neighbor Agreement movement was introduced to Victoria in 2006. AIDS Vancouver Island was shut down in 2008. Originally a tool for environmental and social justice, the Good Neighbor Agreements are currently used for social control. Regardless of issues that individuals are facing, so whether it's addiction or a mental health problem, whether they're actively using or not, whether they have pets or not, that they deserve and they can move into a housing unit. Police out there, I just would like you to check your motives and your intentions as to why you do what you do and how you do it. And are you seeking other police officers or people in your own community where you're like, I like the way he or she goes about her job. I want to be like her instead of feeding the ego of power and uh, uh, being in an authoritative position. You know, First Nations people have been, there's a lot of things that have been taken away from us. Even in history, the Indian agents that were sent on our reserves is also connected to how the cops watch the people on the streets today. It's that constant surveillance that perpetuates fear in individuals who live on the street. Badge 422. Do you own land here in Victoria? Do I own land here in Victoria? Do you own a house or an apartment or a condo here in Victoria? Why are you asking me if I own a house or a condo or an apartment here in Victoria? Because that's who pays the city taxes and that's who pays our wages. So what are you saying? I think part of what we have to do is the guidance comes from above, right? It's from the government. It's whether it's telling us you deal with this as a health issue or as a, or as a social issue that's a criminalization. Right? For lack of a better term, right? Yeah. Possessing drugs, it's yeah. illegal. Selling drugs, it's illegal. Yeah. Having it on your person, it's illegal. And that's what's dictated to us by the government. That's what they say the community wants. Right? That's what the government tells us to do. Hello. The federal conservative government right now is preparing to spend $9 billion building prisons. We need to be building 
homes and providing jobs. Teresa mentioned earlier the bullying effect. We're trying to teach our kids in school about bullying and not to do it. How can we teach them when we have a police force that runs rapid with it? You should be out here helping people. Like, that, that, fuck, they know people out here. Whether they know it or not, they're out here. You know, exactly. half the kids down here go home at night. You know how many kids come down here at night and go home after? They come down here and panhandle, get fucking high, and then they go home. And that, that half of them get beat up and suddenly you know, them are just drug addicts and they will just keep coming back. And eventually I see them start hanging down because they are homeless. Either their parents have kicked them out or whatever, for whatever, whatever reason they're down here. Now they're homeless, right? And it's, it's just fucked up, right? What did you just say to me? <laughs> I said every single one of these people out here in the streets is a person with a disability. Addiction is a health issue. What do you think um, that events like this can do for the community? Well, for one of the things it can do is that it'll get the voices of the homeless heard about the very problems that face them. And they'll be able to pay much more closer attention to the idea that the homeless people want homes built for them, not, not shelters. That's not the answer. suggested about about the criminalization of poverty. Yes. That's what's happening in this community. People are being yeah. profiled as poor and therefore being targeted by the police. Right. Mm -hmm. It's outrageous. It seems to me the federal government has a role in that, as well as the provincial government. For instance, the Canadian Human Rights Act should start preventing social profiling of that kind. Right. It's start, starting to look at racial profiling in yes. services, right? Yes. So I'm wondering whether we should get more teeth into the Human Rights Act. But we're having a, a problem here. Yeah. And a lot of the panicking public are behind the police in harassing street people. I agree. Because it's panic. How do we de-escalate that? How do we start not uh, socially profiling people who are homeless and in poverty? You might find this hard to believe, but as a lawyer, I'm always s s skeptical of, of legalizing and dealing okay. uh, and trying to find a human rights answer to this because I don't trust these boards. They're expensive. They're wasting a lot of people's time. I'd rather get real money to real people. I think it's more to do with uh, the, the rebuilding community, respect, and money. Simple money, like social programs, investing in our population the way we're not doing now is, to me, a, a more long, st like long-lasting solution. I really would encourage this. I was so impressed with the Human Rights Watch, which is an American-funded organization that came up to Canada and proved that the RCMP were raping women, that they were abusing women and girls, mostly Aboriginal in northern communities and elsewhere. And it took an American objective group to point the finger and shine the spotlight on things that we just we knew were going on, but nobody would stand up. How does that work here? I think there are organizations that should be, just as David is sitting here with this camera, I was gonna say that should project. be going around yeah. and should be documenting abuses the same way that Human Rights Watch did so effectively in the last year in Canada. And, and you know, just think about the success that Human Rights Watch has had. If you want inspiration, use the money to ins in improve the lot of people who are being abused by the police. If you, I hear all these stories, right? Prove it. Well, how do you prove it? I got a camera showing you beating up this homeless person, or not acting when someone else is beating up that homeless person, or standing and watching for 45 minutes until somebody comes to deal with the person who's been abused. Mm -hmm. Like, let's hold our people to account. We have the technology, yeah. and we've got a lot of young activist law students mm -hmm. that would be only too happy to do a class action lawsuit or whatever it takes to hold them to account. There's a tool for you. That's well, no, where it's I great think because we can you go. just explain the Transform Homelessness Advocacy Watch project which already has 73 short 
YouTube videos for oh my God. advocacy watch, community. and that's yeah. the film we're oh, right about on. to release. Oh, that's, that's excellent. Well, good on you. Right yeah, on. No, good on everybody. And we have an affidavit our project. project. Our committee. Affidavit yeah. project. With, and, with, and, with and, and, and I would be very happy, and I've got to go soon here, but I, I'm very connected with the University of Victoria and the students there, and you know, you, look, young lawyers them. in the yeah. town. Yeah. I will do, if you want me to help in any way to kind of play that tiny role in this problem, I would be very happy to to facilitate. But overall, the movie was pretty good. It, it takes a really good look at uh, at what life is really like on Victoria streets from uh, from somebody who's from some people who don't normally have the opportunity to have their voice heard. It's not very often that people have access to the kind of uh, things that, that people was able to get access to. Partly, I want to say thank you for making that documentary because it's makes that those people's stories and that information so much more accessible to people, I think. Meet you there. Okay, I think number one solution would be any way that we can get out there to connect with people who are homeless now and encourage them to, to find a way to tell their own stories. I really do. Because it's been really cool working with like Kim Freeman and other people like Christopher in the film. That is what has been the most profound. Is like, you know, no, if you can't do that, then watch out for each other, your neighbors, watch out for them, get involved, you know what I mean?